This is a video on how to make the badger seal, which is uh, shown here. Um, you essentially need um, a ruler for measuring, a pair of scissors, and if you have access to other cutting tools, um, a, it could be useful to have some of these snips, um, but they're not critical. Um, one of the things that I did which is useful is to uh, print out this one-to-one uh, -one scale of some of the key parts of the badger seal, um, and that's on our website. Um, you can download that and print it. Um, and the first one is this six inch length foam wire. So this is the, the foam wire that we use. Simply measure out six inches using the ruler. And then, like I said, I use the snips. You could also use scissors. So that's the first step. Um, and you can, again, if you have this printed to scale, you can, you can size up what, as you make it to make sure that it's um, approximately right. All right, the next step is to cut two pieces of tubing that's two and a quarter in length. Um, so for again, for that, you can either mark it at two and a quarter or you can just eye it up with the snips. So I'm gonna cut that at two and a quarter. I'm gonna double check that that's the right length. Two and a quarter, looks good. Um, you want to make sure that it's a nice clean cut, that if they're uh, right angles and they're not, they don't have big angles on the end. So once you have one, then you can use the first one to measure the length of the second one. So put those together and cut those to length. Okay. The next step is to slide on the tubes to the foam wire. Um, and so to do that, you just push it on. And the drawing shows that it should fit on approximately a half inch. So get it as much as you can slid up. So you can see here that it shows um, that the tube is slid in about a half of inch. So I can use the, the ruler here, or I could use it to scale. I could use the printout and see that that's approximately right. And then you do the same thing for the other side, you push it on. And if you're having difficulty um, doing that, one little tip is you can cut a little edge off of the foam to make a little bit of a taper and then sometimes it slides on a little bit easier and just push it on. And then you can kind of uh, use this piece of paper uh, to get to see to scale, or you can just use a ruler to see that it's about the, the right length. So then once you have that, one of the key things is you want, as shown in the drawing, you want um, the tubing to, to be somewhat forming like a circle around. So you, the, the tubing, the stuff that we have, and most of, I think other tubing has been wrapped in a bundle. Um, and so that you want to get that, you want to kind of utilize that curvature and make sure that it's, it's curving like it would um, an O around your mouth. So that's kind of how I have it here. So that's good. Um, I guess what you don't want is it to be something like that, where it's out of plane with this foam wire. So, okay, so the next step is to do the little snips on the side. So again, you could do that with scissors. Um, I find it a lot easier to use these little uh, snips. And you just wanna create two little cuts at about 45 degrees each. And you can see that that's the first one. And in this case, you can see it in the drawing that it's right at about a half of inch. So it's right where the foam ends. And you don't want it too big because if you want, you don't want to jeopardize the integrity of the tubing. So I think that's a pretty good size. You can check it to scale. Again, on this drawing, you could line it up and see if it's about right. And then again, you want to notice that it's on the outside arc of this tube is where you want that little slit. So you do the same thing on this side, make a little slit. So 
so that's that part. So I have a spool of elastic here, and it will, I'll put all the details again down in, in the details of the video. About 30 inches, and then I can just cut that either with the snips or with scissors. It doesn't have to be exact because you can always trim it at the end. All right, then you want to feed it through the tube and bend over the tube a little bit so then the elastic cord can get out. Then you do the same thing on the other side. You slide it through, let it go out. Um, and so then you have the cord looped through the tubing um, and coming out those little slits. The next step is um, to tie a knot on the end. So you can tie a knot to hold what we'll put on next, which is the cord lock. So just go ahead and make a little knot on the end. And then you want to get your cord lock. And there are a lot of different options for this. Um, we ended up going with these little silicone ones. And they have a large opening on one end. They have a small opening on the other end. You want to just stuff the elastic through the large opening. Um, and this is where you might need another tool. We just, you could use like a coat hanger, probably a fork or something sharp like that would work or something pointy. And you just jam the elastic cord through that hole. And then you just pull on it kind of hard. And then it should kind of slip over that knot. Okay, there's that. You could also put the cord lock on first if you find it easier um, and then tie the knot at the end. The last step that we do um, is we put it in a little plastic bag with a sticker on it that has a QR code to our website with more information, the name of it. Um, and then the person that uh, is using this fitter that it belongs to can put their name there. So as described in some of the other videos, one of the issues that some people have is that this lower chin strap pops off and it may be because they have a thick neck or a beard or some other uh, reason. Um, so we developed what's called a type B. This is the original one and it's called type A. So I'm now going to tell you, uh, give you some ideas on how to make a type B, which is when you have a lower chin strap that goes around the back of the neck um, and connects um, around the back of the head uh, to prevent that lower chin strap from coming off. So you really need an, uh, just two things, another uh, piece of 30 inch elastic cord and an, you need another cord lock. You then slide in the cord lock I have to first make sure that it's equal on both sides. And then you tie a knot to prevent the cord lock from sliding off. So the next thing is to take the type A badger seal and then what you're going to want to do is take this second strap and you're going to want to tie it around this lower part of the chin strap and then tie a knot so that you are creating a little loop on the end here of the chin strap and then you do the same thing on the other side and you can do a lot of different types of knots the main thing is you want to allow this strap to be able to move and not be constrained so you don't want to tie the strap tightly on to this lower chin strap and then you could cut off the excess with scissors and so then now you have the type B um, and as you'll see in other videos uh, the best way then to put this on is to put this strap on first 
and then put the upper one on. And then you can tighten that lower chin strap. And you can tighten the upper one too. Um, and that's kind of how it works and you can move it around. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to make uh, type C, which is the ones that have ear loops around both sides. So there's an ear loop on this side and then an ear loop on the other side. Um, and this could work well with these ear savers. You can uh, find them online or you can download and 3D print them uh, on Thingiverse. Um, but uh, you can't really wear these just totally around your ear. You can try it, but there's a fair amount of pressure. So you may need that ear saver. So to build the ear loop one, um, you start with the original type A, the Badger Seal. And what you're gonna uh, also need is an extra cord lock, um, another piece of string or cord, um, and then another two and a quarter uh, in length uh, PVC tubing. So sa same exact type that you used on the original Badger Seal. And what you're gonna wanna do is first cut or untie the knot um, on your original Badger Seal and then slide the cord lock out. And then you're gonna want to put this other clear tubing um, on the bottom. And so you slide that in and then you can slide this back through just like you did before. And you may need some little tweezers or something to pull that through. So now I have essentially the same idea as before with the type A, but now I've added this plastic tube on the bottom. And what I'm gonna do now is just run a second cord, the second one through this lower um, tube that would be on your chin. And so that's a little trickier and you may need some pointy device like a coat hanger or something like that. You wanna feed the second string through the tube. Okay, and then you get it even on both sides. And so again, now what I have is I have the same loop as before with the original Badger Seal um, on the top. It goes from here, loops down, goes through the little slits around underneath the chin, back up, out the slit, and up. And what I've done is I've added a second cord um, that is going through this second tube that goes underneath the chin, um, and it goes out the side there. So this is just one piece so now what you want to do is you have these two loops, one going from one side all the way through this plastic tubing to the other side, and then you have the top loop that's going around, down underneath the chin, up through the slit, and back out. Um, and what you're going to want to do is make sure that they're even on both sides. So make sure that these are the same length on both sides, and same thing with the lower one. And if they're not, you can kind of slide them through. And once they are, what you want to do then is cut the lower one so that it's also the same length as the upper one. And you can always trim these up later on. It's not super critical. Make sure they're the same. And then you want to slide on a cord lock to both sides. Okay, so we have the cord locks on both sides and then the two ear loops. Um, and then what you can do is put it around, like I said, an ear saver as shown here. Um, let me show you up here. And then this will, these cords will probably be too long. It really kind of depends on what you're gonna do if you're gonna use an ear saver or not. So you can always just tie a new knot and then trim off the excess. And you're gonna wanna adjust uh, the tension on these. You can adjust them individually, so if you pull up on one, it will do the lower, it goes through that lower tube and adjust the tension around the chin. Um, and if you do the upper one, 
it's it's a little bit more pressure on the nose piece